preliminary alginate impressions for complete dentures. Irreversible hydrocolloid or alginate impressions for removable prosthodontics have different requirements than those for other disciplines. This video describes how to make preliminary alginate impressions for complete dentures. Use metal or plastic edentulous trays that provide 5 to 7 millimeters of space from the tissues. This will help to improve strength and minimize distortion. The space also provides room to capture the frena and vestibular roll without distension. If a stock tray is too large, it will distort and distend tissue, which can have adverse effects on the fit and comfort of dentures. Selecting a proper size tray is a critical step for preliminary impressions. Pick an edentulous tray that matches the size and shape of the arch. The stokay or stock trays come in three different shapes, ovoid, tapering and square. Each tray has a hole in the handle that represents the shape of the tray and the number here U-1-S stands for upper size 1 square. You can use a patient's existing denture to select the proper tray. To select a tray using this method, first disinfect a denture, place it in a bag, de-glove, and then compare it to the laminated life-size photos of trays in the clinic. This tray is too tapering or triangular for the arch. The tray will be approximately the right size if all the teeth fit within the tray. If the whole denture base fits within the tray, it's often too big. Before proceeding further, try the tray intraorally to check its suitability. Add utility wax to the back of a thoroughly dried tray. This will prevent excess alginate from falling to the back of the oral cavity during the impression. If the tray is not dry, the wax will not stick. Mold and shape the wax, thinning the superior edge so that it takes a contour similar to the posterior border of the patient's existing denture. Place the tray with wax intraorally and momentarily apply pressure to adapt to the palate. Areas of the tray that are severely short of the vestibular roll can be extended with wax or compound as well, but normally if you're using a syringe technique this is not necessary. Complete denture impressions can be made with a properly loaded edentulous tray alone or combined with a syringe technique that helps to capture the full extension of the vestibules. A syringe can be used for the whole vestibule or for just areas like these that are difficult to capture. Prepare a 12cc disposable plastic syringe by cutting off the tip at a position that will produce a 4 to 5 mm opening. Lubricate the plunger and set aside. Pre-measure material in a non-contaminated area. Do not take containers to your operatory. Irreversible hydrocolloid comes in both facet and regular set. For the technique that I will describe, use regular set. Prior to measuring the alginate powder by volume, rotate the sealed container a couple of times if you believe the material has settled. For most impressions, three scoops will be sufficient when using the syringe technique. When measuring alginate, scoop, tap several times, level the scoop, then empty it into your bowl. If you tap excessively before leveling your scoop, you will change the density and hence the mix of your material. This is normally undesirable. Place the patient in a supine or reclined position Instruct the patient to relax their lips and cheeks. Prepare the patient for the impression. Lightly and quickly dry the tissues using cotton pliers and folded gauze. In the mandible, use the same technique or pack some gauze in the floor of the mouth. Combine the powder and the water in a mixing bowl and mix according to the manufacturer's specifications. Ensure that all the powder is incorporated into the liquid. A stropping technique can work well. Use the side edge of the spatula to gather up any extra powder on the sides or bottom of the bowl. Similarly, wipe off the blade of the spatula occasionally in case there's some unmixed powder on it. The completed mix should glisten and there should not be any appearance of granularity on the surface. This mix is close, but it is not quite as smooth and creamy as it could be. This mix is way too runny. Load the syringe from the back end until it is at least three quarters full. Wipe off any excess insert the plunger and give the syringe to the operator. The assistant will load the tray while the operator is syringing alginate into the vestibules. Make sure there is no excess at the posterior border of the tray by evening the alginate with the wax that you placed previously. In the maxilla, begin filling the vestibule by syringing buckle to the hamular notch and then moving quickly toward the labial frena. Then repeat on the opposite side and seat the tray. Border mold, as I have described in my video on final impressions. In the mandible, slip or roll the tip of the syringe just below the tongue. 
syringe until you see material between the tongue and the ridge, and then move forward to the lingual frenum. In the buccal vestibule, begin adjacent the retromolar pad and move forward to the labial frenum. Then repeat on the opposite side. Seat the impression and border mold. If you don't plan to use a syringe, try using two mirrors to improve the registration of the vestibular row. See my video on final impressions for more details on this technique. To remove the impressions, raise the lip, squirt a little bit of water at the periphery, wiggle the handle up and down until you hear the seal break, and then remove swiftly. Lastly, in the maxillary arch, use an indelible stick to mark the vibrating line. Reseat the impression and the line will transfer to the alginate impression. In turn, this will transfer to the diagnostic cast and help determine where to end a custom tray. A preliminary impression is an important first step to making a good denture. Try some of the techniques in this video to help improve yours.